What's up, y'all? It's Jason Alon from Fever 333, and you're watching Loud TV. Yo, watching! 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 So, um, yeah, let's go for this European Fest. Something special for an American band? Yeah, I mean, we played here four years ago and uh, I fell in love with it. I think this festival is amazing. Uh, the, the echelon of bands you get to play amongst and then the actual festival itself, the way that it's set up, the vibe, the essence. It's cool. It's just cool to be a part of. Good food? I haven't eaten yet. But I would imagine it's France. So, I would <laughs> um, so there is a new team. So yeah. two new members and plus one on stage, or yeah, we got three. We got um, Brandon Davis on guitar, Thomas Pridgen on drums, and April K on bass. And I wanted—I've actually wanted a bass player in the band for years. And then when it was time to kind of do this new era and iteration of Fever, I was able to do that. So I'm so like so blessed to have that this like group on stage with me it's been amazing was it easy to find those new members well i knew brandon i've known brandon for years my guitar player thomas pridgeon is one of my favorite drummers of all time like ever he's an actual legend and april someone showed me april uh, just showed me her bass playing and then what she was all about and ideologically ethically it just fit so it wasn't hard, but it wasn't necessarily easy. I just kind of took a leap and was like, do y'all want to play with me? And then they were in, so yeah, I guess it was just natural. Yeah, it was cool. There is a new song? Yeah, yeah. Swing? Swing, yep. And because of you, <laughs> we, we sang this fucking song all the ah, morning, you know? Ah, just, ah. Yeah, you know, it's, it goes straight to your fucking mind, that's man. What I was, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> Yeah, you man. are guilty of it. <laughs> yeah, that's I got a penchant for like pop sensibility. I you know, I grew up listening to all types of music, but a lot of like soul and funk and groove music. So I just love like anything that makes you go like this and that you can kind of sing over and over again. It's like a mantra. Yeah. After all, a uh, good song is uh yeah, the song goes to your brain, yeah. to your heart or Yeah, or? yeah, totally, totally. You hope so. What about th this this fucking show <laughs> man you know one of my best band ever is Dillinger from yeah from yeah, yeah, know, yeah and we we saw Greg Pucciato yesterday yeah and I have the same feeling with you you know thank you it's a fucking thank <laughs> disaster you. on stage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, but in the good way yeah totally man I mean there is no rules no none I mean that's art right like that's if you're gonna be boundless in any at any point in your life it's like it's got to be through art at least and uh, for me I think it's just sort of like uh, in performing in this way you're kind of exhibiting and demonstrating freedom and liberation and finding ways to to push yourself and then creating spaces for people to do the same for themselves so it's really it's really bigger than just wilding out you know I think it's it's also just uh, Ex uh, exemplifying liberation, you know. But yeah, Dillinger is like one of the wildest bands I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It seems that you you like to be in danger, you know. A little bit. Yeah. You like to climb. You yeah. like to run. <laughs> to jump. To yeah. Jump. I've been talking to my therapist a lot about that for the past <laughs> few years. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I think again, I was talking to my wife about it the other day. I I really believe that it's it's just. Uh, it's an example of what is possible, right? Like it's like we're capable of so much, yet there's so many constructs and confines and parameters that were given in most societies that make us feel like we, we can't pass a certain point. So for me, again, via art and music and performance, I really just try to find a way to, to push past that and show that we are like incredible beings. You know, humans are incredible. We can do so many things. Uh, as long as our minds, uh, you know, think it's cap uh, it's possible, you know. Did you catch your show today? Did you cut the show? Nah, no? nah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. We had to kind of like go through it because we only had so much time. But yeah, 
No, it's good. It's all chill. Um, you this morning you were checking about immigrants. Yep. Immigrants people. Uh, it seems that because of the weather, because yep. of the climate changes, yep. there were there will be more and more wars, more and more immigrants yep. everywhere. Yep. So yet uh, that's the point. Yeah man, I mean look, at the end of the day, like <sighs> I remember when, you know, France won the World Cup, right? And everyone was talking about the team, you know, being comprised of people uh, that have African descent. But these members of the team were like, we're French. We are French people. And I think that that's a good example of how, you know, a multicultural, a multicultural like aggregate creates a beautiful diversity, which creates more and more, which expands a culture and creates it at the same time. So like in America, we have that in America, we got people from all over. And to me, that's what creates, uh, that to me, that is the most important and most, um, reputable piece of American culture is that we're actually quite diverse. So, yeah, today I was saying it too. I say it everywhere you go for the most part, you know, because it's, it's all over. Like you said, climate change is going to cause it. Uh, there's there going to be climate refugees. There's going to be, you know, war refugees. There's going to be religious refugees. And again, at the end of the day, these is just land. You know, we're just moving around on a board, but it's, it's finding a way to assimilate people and understanding their worth in this culture as well. So when you released the uh, wrong generation, you yeah. felt a lot of emotion. Yeah. And it was uh, my favorite album of the year. Thank you. And uh, do you think uh, mentalities change in the US during uh, since uh, Black Lives Matter? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I think what has happened is is we've made it clear that racism is still rampant and apparent all over America. It's systemic, it's institutional. Uh, I think that what during that time, like we were able to understand it, but with that was the pendulum swinging the other way and the opposition, well, people that claim themselves to be or find themselves to be the opposition to what we're standing for have made themselves, they feel emboldened and they feel empowered by our previous president who literally was dog whistling for these people to act in ways that were heinous and, and a system now feeling as though it's deteriorating uh, in its own power because it gains power from white supremacy, that, that system now is trying to hold on as best it can in any way it can and that creates a massive conflict. So, no, I don't think, it's not enough to say that it's significant, right? Like, I think we still have a lot more work to do. It's such a shame because in the rock music, I feel there is some changes, you know? Yeah. And you say, I'm a huge fan of Body Counts. Yeah, yeah. Stuck Mojo. Yeah. You yeah. know, with black people and totally. everyone Jones from Seattle now. Totally. And so, yeah, and more and more black people, it's good. Totally. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. And I mean, I think that it's got to be a microcosmic shift, right? We start here in this subculture. We show that. Then the, we take this, like, sort of... Um, this connection that we've made, even if it's just at a show and you hopefully take that home with you or you take that to your friends that maybe don't come to rock shows or don't come to punk shows and see that like actually in a space that prior was, you know, predominantly white spaces, now we've got black, brown, Asian, LGBTQ+, we got indigenous people, you know, seeing this in this smaller space, it's easier to see the possibility when you're in a smaller, confined and control, uh, consolidated space concentrated space and hopefully people are taking that and taking it to their little their home their neighborhood their city and telling people we could do better I, I would hope you know that that's like our mission at least you made a blur blur cover yeah, yeah a little mashup yeah I was quite surprised yeah 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 that's one of the bands that my um, my uncle when I was so my uncle gave me basically showed me rock music um, he and my mom so my mom is Scottish and my uncle is Scottish, and he came from Scotland and brought me Radiohead, Bush, Blur, like all Oasis, brought me all that shit. And so Blur was like one of the first ones I connected with like that, like big time, on the rock sense. And then um, we matched it up with uh, Nipsey Hussle verse and an NWA verse on top. So it's again just showing the marriage and intersection of rock and roll and hip hop that we're trying to, you know, exist in. I miss Agis from Scotland. Yeah, 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 dude. My, <laughs> yeah, my family still eats that shit. It's wild. <laughs>
When you're in France, do you take the time to discover uh, new influence? A hundred percent. I love France. Yeah. I love France. Yeah, I'm actually staying here after this tour. Okay. I'll be in uh, for three weeks, all from Paris down to South France, all up and down the coast, um, and then back to Paris and go home. But my, my family's going to meet me here. So, uh, France, undoubtedly has been at the forefront of so many amazing renaissances, uh, politically, uh, artistically, romantically. You know, France is, uh, is a champion of so many amazing movements that can find, them, fi that find their way into art. So, man, even from just getting like a coffee, or like a tea, like, you know, seriously, like the way that the, 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 way that, uh, the French, or at least the people I know, like respect food and the way that, you know, the way you do meals and the way it's a, it's a completely different uh, way of living than where I'm from in America and I'm, all, I'm here for it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But we're just a little bit groovy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I honestly, no, what I, I really do love, like there's a, there's a type of, I believe that, that, that if you can find pieces of culture that aren't your own, that speak to you and that, you know, you can take them back with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we have, my, one of my best friends is French. And sh when we go to her house to eat, it's a completely different way of eating. But then we converse and we talk and we have these, and that's, that's I don't know, I think that's special. And that's just one example, but I love it.